have you ever noticed your car's engine revving up and down while you're just sitting in park? That jerking, shaking sensation at idle can be pretty unsettling, especially if the check engine light decides to join the party. But what's really going on? Why does the RPM bounce up and down like that when the engine should be calm? In this video, we're breaking down the eight most common reasons your engine RPM fluctuates while idling. From air fuel imbalances to faulty sensors, we'll cover what causes it, what symptoms to look for, and how you can test or fix each issue yourself. Let's take a closer look at each of the cause. Number one, air fuel mixture imbalance. First up, the most fundamental cause, an imbalanced air fuel mixture. Your engine runs best with a precise ratio of 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. If the mixture leans too rich or too lean, combustion becomes incomplete, and that leads to inconsistent pressure inside the cylinders, which causes the RPM to rise and fall unpredictably. This imbalance can come from many underlying problems. And that brings us to our next points. Number two. Use an OBD2 scanner and reset the ECU. Before replacing parts blindly, grab an OBD2 scanner and check your vehicle for trouble codes. These codes can instantly point to the root cause, whether it's a faulty sensor, stuck actuator, or wiring issue. And here's a tip. Even after a repair, the engine control unit might still hold on to outdated data. In that case, resetting the ECU can restore normal idle. You can do this by disconnecting the battery for a few minutes or using the reset function in your scan tool. Number three, vacuum leaks. Vacuum leaks are another major culprit behind erratic idling. They allow unmetered air to sneak into the engine, air that isn't measured by the mass airflow sensor. This throws off the ECU's fuel calculations, creates a lean air fuel mixture, and causes unstable RPMs. The most common leak points include cracked vacuum hoses, a stuck or faulty PCV valve, or worn gaskets around the throttle body or intake manifold. To find the leak, you can spray brake cleaner or carb cleaner around these areas while the engine is idling. If the RPM changes, you found the source. Or better yet, if you have access to a smoke machine, it'll make the leak visible right away. Number four, idle air control valve, IACV, issues. The idle air control valve, or IACV, regulates airflow when the throttle is closed, like when you're waiting at a red light. If this valve gets stuck or clogged with carbon buildup, your idle RPM may become unstable or even too high. Want to test it? Try unplugging the IAC valve while the engine is idling. If there's no RPM change, it's likely not working properly. Start by cleaning it with throttle body cleaner. If that doesn't fix the issue, you may need to replace it. Number five, throttle body problems. At idle, your throttle body should be almost completely closed, but over time, carbon buildup around the butterfly valve can cause it to stick slightly open, letting in more air than it should. This often leads to a surging or bouncing idle. The good news is, cleaning the throttle body can usually fix it. Just remove the air intake duct, then use brake cleaner and a soft brush to carefully clean the inside. One GMC Sierra owner actually solved his idle surge problem just by doing this, using nothing more than an AC Delco foam cleaner.
Number 6. Faulty Engine Sensors Modern engines rely on a bunch of sensors to keep things running smoothly, especially at idle. But if just one of these sensors sends the wrong signal, your engine's air fuel mix can get messed up. And that's when you start noticing your RPMs bouncing up and down. Here are a few key sensors to keep an eye on. MAF sensor. This one measures how much air is coming in. If it reads too low, your engine doesn't get enough fuel and starts running lean. O2 sensor. This checks how well the engine is burning fuel. If it gives bad data, the computer can't adjust things properly. Throttle position sensor. TPS. Tells the engine how far open the gas pedal is. A faulty one can confuse the system and cause weird idling. Coolant temperature sensor. If it thinks the engine is warm when it's actually cold, it may not give the engine the fuel it needs to start or idle smoothly. Good news. You don't always need fancy tools to check these. Many can be tested with a basic multimeter. But even then, sometimes the problem isn't the sensor itself. It could just be a loose wire or dirty connector causing bad signals. So before replacing parts, check the wiring and connections first. A quick cleanup might solve the issue. Number seven, dirty engine air filter. Your engine needs to breathe even when it's just idling. But if the air filter is dirty or clogged, it can't get enough air. That chokes the combustion process and can make the RPMs bounce or feel rough when you're sitting in park. It's a simple fix. Pop the hood and check the filter. If it looks dark, dusty, or you can't remember the last time it was replaced, it's probably time for a new one. Replacing a clogged filter helps your engine idle more smoothly and run more efficiently. Number eight, bad battery or alternator. Your ECU and engine sensors need consistent voltage to work correctly, and that power comes from your battery and alternator. If the alternator is failing or the battery isn't charging properly, the voltage can drop too low, especially at idle. This messes with sensor readings and causes rough or unstable RPMs. To check, start the engine and measure battery voltage. It should read between 13.5 and 14.5 volts. If it's below 12.7 volts, you might have a weak alternator or a dying battery. And here's another test. With the serpentine belt off, try spinning the alternator pulley by hand. If it's stiff or seized, it needs to be replaced. Idle RPM fluctuations can be annoying, but they're not mysterious. If you go through it step by step, you can trace the issue to one of these eight causes and fix it without guesswork. Have you experienced unstable RPM at idle? Let me know in the comments what fixed it for your car. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more real world car diagnostics and repair tips. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.